Hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, sorry for blocking your way through our tea session. <laughs> but um, for the last um, talk for this afternoon, um, I'll be presenting the JS-based Vulnerability Assessment of Seagrass Meadows in the different studies areas in the Philippines. I'm Ray Rosikides, by the way, from the University of the Philippines. And um, I'm currently a research associate, which is involved in seagrass mapping using different remote sensing um, technologies. Um, this paper that I will be presenting is one of the output of the previous project that I am part of, um, which I will be discussing later. So this is the outline of my presentation. Um, so I'll just discuss some brief introduction about the seagrass in the Philippines. Um, um, as, uh, as our colleague um, presented a while ago, um, Philippines has a lot large areas of seagrass beds, and I, um, it, is, it has the second highest seagrass biodiversity in the world. But seagrass cover has been declining due to the declination of water quality, degradation of environment and resources, and human-induced disturbances. So we have to do something to protect these resources. Um, vulnerability assessment, um, according to the third IPCC, assessment report on 2001 is the degree of measurement in which a system is prone to the effects of climate change. The, um, there are three components for the vulnerability assessment. First is the exposure. Exposure is the extent a resource is subject to climate change stressors. Next is the sensitivity. It is the extent a resource responds to the different stressors directly or indirectly. And adaptive capacity, which is the ability of the resource and community efforts to help these resources to minimize its response to climate change. Um, this is the project that I was telling a while ago. This is the PhilIDA2 program. Um, it was a na um, nationwide detailed research assessment using LIDAR service. Um, our funding agency is the Philippines Department of Science and Technology, and the implementer is the University of the Philippines Training Center for Applied Geodesy and Photogrammetry. Um, one of the um, objective of this program is to create a vulnerability assessment of um, seagrass meadows, is to develop a framework. So that's why we're applying this framework that was developed from our previous project into different study sites in the Philippines and um, analyze what are the critical factors that uh, makes our seagrass meadows vulnerable to climate change. Um, this is the five, the PhilIDA2 pr program has five projects. Um, the agricultural resource assessment, which is more on, of course, focused on agricultural resources. Aquatic resource assessment, which is involved in the extraction of coastal resources such as um, mangroves and um, aquaculture areas. Um, the forest resource assessments using LIDAR, which are um, focused on forest um, resources. The development of Philippine hydrologic data set for watersheds and renewable energy resource mapping. Um, I am part of the second project, which is, which is the aquatic resource assessment. As I said a while ago, one of our objectives, aside from mapping the, um, the coastal um, resources using LIDAR, is to develop a framework for vulnerability assessment. So this, um, we have partners from different um, parts of the Philippines. Um, as you can see, Philippines um, is clustered into three big um, group of islands, which is Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And these are the schools that are our partners for each cluster. So each, um, each school um, conducted vulnerability ass assessment for um, one site in their region. So the objective of this presentation is to integrate the results of the vulnerability assessment of seagrass meadows from different study sites in the Philippines and to analyze the critical factors that contribute to the vulnerability of seagrass meadows to climate change and anthropogenic activities. So these are the, this is the framework that we've developed. Um, so from the exposure layer and the sensitivity layer, um, we've, we've combined these to determine the potential impact. This potential impact increases the vulnerability of, seagrass, of our seagrasses. Then we will add the adaptive capacity, which um, negates or somehow minimizes or um, lessens its effect to determine the final vulnerability of the resource. I will discuss this more in the next slides. So for the exposure layer, there's a study by Dr. Laura David 
at all from the university from the University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute, in which they have assessed the long-term data trends of ocean and atmospheric parameters using satellite-derived data sets. So they've checked um, effects from increasing ocean temperature, extreme heating events, extreme rainfall events, disturbed water budget, and sea level rise. So they have divided the Philippines into different clusters, and they have assigned um, scores from one to five, um, five being the highest, uh, on, the on the exposure of these um, areas in the different um, climate change related um, activities or events. So we've used these scores to determine the exposure layer for, for the resource. For the sensitivity and adaptive capacity, we've divided it um, into three different um, components. First is the intrinsic characteristics, which um, involves the intrinsic, pro intrinsic properties and the governance. Um, next is the anthropogenic activities, which has the anthropogenic disturbances and human intervention. And last is the habitat characteristics, using, um, the, as, I, as you can see, the habitat characteristics and the habitat morphology. So the blue one is the sensitivity, and the green one is the adaptive capacity. So we've combined these three components to determine the final vulnerability of the resources. For the sensitivity, we've determined several factors for each component. So for the intrinsic property, these are the GIS-derived data. As you can see, it's the depth, um, proximity to coastal resources, proximity to agricultural areas, aquaculture, and um, river outlets. So these, um, these proximities were done, I determined using um, a GIS software. And we buffered um, from the shape files of different um, of the aquaculture areas of the coastal resources, and then assigned each um, each buffer a score from also from one to five, so that um, it it can have a standard. So um, um, of course, the closer the proximity of seagrass meadows to this uh, to this shape files or to this. Uh, to the agriculture areas, to aquaculture, and to river outlets, the higher the score, the, the higher its sensitivity. Next is the anthropogenic activities. First, the water quality, the dependence of the population on fishing, tourism, and other activities, and the catch rate. And seagrass extent composition, um, presence of fish species, and solid waste accumulation management for the habitat characteristics. So for this part, um, we've conducted focus group discussions. We've visited different um, villages and then um, ask, the, ask them, we prepared, we prepared a uh, questionnaire, and then we assigned um, scores for each answer. And then we've consolidated it to determine the final sensitivity scores of the um, resource of, in the area. So for adaptive capacity, these are the three components, the governance. Um, we've also um, determined the scores for this uh, component um, from the focus group discussions. So these are the stu different study sites in the Philippines. So I'll just have a brief um, discussion on the, the results of the vulnerability assessment for each study site. And I'll just um, point out what um, affects the um, final vulnerability rating. So first, this is Claveria Cagayan. Um, as you can see, even though there's a small patch of seagrass area, it has also low vulnerability, which is, um, as, as, um, based on our um, focus group discussion, this is mostly because of the strict implementation of ordinances and high awareness of the community to the importance of the seagrass sea beds. Um, this is in Alaminas, Pangasinan. Alaminas, um, Pangasinan is one of the, um, I think, or if not one, it is the most, um, um, most um, pro, um, most product um, it is the um, area where most um, fish pond areas are. So the seagrass beds have high vulnerability because of the its proximity to aquaculture, urban areas, and river outlets. Also, solid waste accumulation is also observed. Um, it is also seen that the seagrass meadows in these areas are monospecific and cave fish species, which um, shelters in seagrass beds are rarely seen. And there are also high tourism activities there because there's a group of islands here wherein it, um, more tourists are going. So that um, 
contributes to the higher vulnerability of the seagrass meadows in this area. Tian Batangas it has high um, tourism activities because this is a diving spot. So it also contributes highly to the sensitivity of the seagrass meadows, which results to a high to medium um, vulnerability of, Lian, of the seagrass meadows. So this is Gloria um, Oriental Mindoro. Um, they have high adaptive capacity due to the strict implementation of policies, which results to low to medium vulnerability. Masbate has also um, is well aware of the importance of seagrasses. That's why they have a low vulnerability of seagrass beds. This is in Eastern Samar. Um, their seagrasses are near the urban areas, which contributes to the high um, vulnerability. This is in Balasan, Iloilo. Even though it has high dependence on fishing, um, the presence of um, different species of seagrass meadows and also the presence of key species contribute to the lower sensitivity score for the resources. This is in Wal Wal Cebu. Even though there's high tourism this, in this area because it's also a diving spot, they have strict implementation of the, um, it is well regulated. That's why it contributes, it has a low vulnerability score. Um, this is in Bacolod. These areas are, are near the agriculture and urban areas. That's why it's a high vulnerability score. This is in Carmen. Um, they also have, they're also near urban areas and agricultural areas. This is in Ngaog, also the same, um, the same analysis because they are also near urban areas and agricultural areas. This is in Davao. They have medium sensitivity because of the decreasing extent of seagrass meadows, but they have strict implementation of, um, of marine protected areas, which include seagrass meadows. And all, this is in Zamboanga. They are also near um, coastal settlements, that's why they have high um, vulnerabilities. So for the consolidation, generally the Philippines has high exposure of, um, to climate change, which also contributes to the higher vulnerability of these seagrass meadows. Uh, also, majority of the Philippines reside in coastal areas since it is an archipelagic nation. I think about 60% of the population um, is in the coastal um, areas of the Philippines. That's why it's also important to mo uh, monitor this and manage this, um, these resources. Um, there's also laws um, available in protection of seagrass beds, but it, is, it should be strictly implemented by the local government units. And also establishment of additional marine protected areas, which includes um, seagrass meadows in it would um, help the seagrass be less vulnerable to climate change. Because I think in the Philippines, um, marine protected areas are somehow focused on coral reefs. So it's also um, advisable to include the seagrass meadows. And also more programs should, um, should be implemented by the government to have uh, community involvement and awareness because um, it is on the people uh, on how to preserve these resources. So for in conclusion, um, the vulnerability assessment studies have been conducted in the different sites in the Philippines using, uh, with the help of the different state universities and colleges in the Philippines. So these studies are important in determining the critical factors that can contribute to the vulnerability of seagrass. And um, local government units and national agencies can use these studies in organizing more campaigns and programs for the protection of these resources. I'd like to thank um, these people, I mean these agencies for this paper and for the possibility, I, for the opportunity for me to present here. And these are my references. Thank you very much. So we have time for one quick question or two very quick ones. Oh. Okay. Hi, so very interesting talk. Thank you very much. Um, was all the mapping that you presented uh, based on LIDAR? Uh, um, regarding the seagrass meadows, um, since we don't have um, enough bathymetric data in the, bathymetric LIDAR data in the Philippines, um, the, um, the LIDAR mapping is focused on mangroves and, um, and aquaculture areas because the only available data are the terrestrial um, LIDAR. But for the seagrass beds, we've used multispectral um, data sets like Landsat and other free available data. And if I have uh, time for another third question, uh, what's the maximum depth in your area? In, yeah. In, um, 
usually these um the based on our um studies the, usually the um the areas that we've mapped using um the, the multi spectral data are only in the shallow ones um i cannot say the exact depth but only in the shallow areas because the deep um the deep sea grasses are can um we're having a hard time mapping it because it's it's can it it is not see it cannot be seen in high resolution images yeah because maybe if they are visible in the lidar image lidar is really good in penetrating deep into the water column yes actually um it's this also in literature um lidar bathymetric lidar is an effective tool in habitat resource mapping but unfortunately we have limited um data sets of bathymetric lidar in the philippines just a small portion okay thank you very much Okay, so thank you very much for your attention to the uh, presenters in this session, and please join me in thanking everybody.